If you keep dying too early, this is the last video you'll ever need to cut that out. Tip six is the thing that personally changed my game around, so stick around and hopefully it can do the same for you. But staying alive off spawn relies on your skill, game sense, and most importantly, drop spot. I'll cover all of these in this video, but let's start with figuring out where you should be landing. Hot drop. In a video about staying alive off spawn, you probably didn't expect me to tell you to hot drop. And while I'm not telling you to do that explicitly, so many people don't even consider it because there's gonna be a lot of people. But let me open your mind. The point of hot dropping is, relative to the amount of people there, you are actually safer. What I mean by this is, imagine you're dropping at some off the grid house or POI. Sometimes you'll land there and be fine, but if you ever get contested, you'll have to engage in that fight, and sometimes you'll lose. This is not efficient or or consistent gameplay. But at main POIs, there are many buildings or loot paths that you can veer off to if you're contested. At main POIs, you don't need to engage to make it out alive if you're contested. Since these POIs are so big, you can have a decent section of the landmark to yourself without needing to engage. But at a small location, you're forced to. And even if you win that fight, you'll probably be walking away shambles since there isn't enough heals in small POIs to fully replenish you. In hot drop locations though, there is plenty of loot around the entire place, even if other people already looted it. Of course, if you want to fight other people that landed there, be my guest, but you can also avoid them by just sneaking through the remaining loot. I'm telling you, going through the leftovers at big POIs is a valid tactic. Seriously, sloppy seconds get the job done. I mean, just look at Jinxie. Whoa, whoa, I mean, what? But, but the last thing to consider about hot dropping versus off the grid dropping before I move on to the fighting tips is this. During ranked, you won't get conned at unnamed landmarks, but during a tournament, you will probably run into more people People contesting you. This is because during tournaments, less people drop hot POIs, they want to play consistently so they avoid these contested areas, but ironically, this will probably get you contested more. Since the main population that usually goes these main POIs gets spread out across the map, all those unnamed landmarks get more people going to them. And I'm sure you always suspected this was the case, but never knew how drastic it was, because I remember last chapter, I would always land off the grid, and I would struggle if someone contested me. But this chapter, I've been making it a point to land main POIs and I actually make it off spawn much more often. This is again because there's more loot and space per capita per person. Meaning, landing at a big POI with two people is much more isolating and actually safer than landing at an off the grid POI with the chance of being contested. The benefit to hot drops too is if worse comes to worse during a tournament, hot drops are easier to turn around and key for some kills. That's why I prefer big locations. Although the next tip is, after landing you need to know when to engage early game kills and when to give them up. I've talked about this tip on my channel before so the OGs will recognize this one, but this will still be fresh for a lot of you. And if it is fresh for you, that just means you're out of the loop, man, because invest in the channel so you're not missing out on some classic tips. And of course, drop a like and use code read the ninja if you're in the process. And if you do, I don't know, I'll get it tatted. But tip two is the 10 second rule. The 10 second rule is how long to engage someone for after landing. I always struggled with the idea of engaging too hard and dying early versus not engaging at all and potentially giving up a free kill, especially during tournament settings where kills give points. So I needed to figure this out and I created an algorithm to ensure a perfect center of gravity and balance point between these two. This is a Read the Ninja classic tip by the way since I came up with this, but I found this number. 10 seconds by researching the minimum amount of time it takes for someone to get on an absolute different playing field than you. I'm talking about loot, shield, etc. So for example, say you land next to someone so you're in two adjacent buildings. You might have landed on a shotgun so you feel confident to try and pursue, but follow for 10 seconds and after that, give it up. During that 10 seconds in this example, your enemy could have landed in a room with a big pot floor spawn and a chest. It's an ideal situation, but not uncommon. And say that chest has another big pot and a shotgun. Two big pots take five seconds each to pop and opening a chest takes about one second. So in 11 seconds, this guy is fully shielded and has a shotgun. Meanwhile, you've been chasing, so you've gotten no shield and haven't farmed any mats. And you might even hit him for more damage, but he hits you for at least 100 white and you're dead. Back to lobby. That's why if you haven't got the kill or significant damage after 10 seconds, give it up. Tip three, in early game fights, I always find myself pushing and then getting surprised when I have no mats. I'll click my mouse button because of muscle memory and then I'll die with my blueprint out. So please avoid this. Be actively thinking about your mats if you haven't farmed it. Unless you're at a couple hundred, have this thought constantly bouncing around your head. Like pretend you're playing no build and you can't even pull out your blueprint. Just don't get caught lacking. And if you are a no build player watching this, then that shouldn't be a problem. But for my build audience, keep this in mind. 
And I know if you get surprised by someone, the muscle memory will probably kick in either way, but there is nothing worse than when you're the aggressor and you die to not knowing what you ran in with. Like, if you're the one pushing, don't die to being surprised by your mat count. It was literally your choice to push. Tip four, in early game fights, you have to commit to one side of the fighting spectrum. Either stay inside or crank to absolute height. Early game fights, your biggest enemy isn't the person you're fighting, it's the third party waiting to jump on you. These two sides of the spectrum cover both of your bases. If you're fighting inside, you have natural walls to cover your angles when you're not building, so a third party can't kill you from afar or even get chip damage in. This playstyle is good because you can conserve mats or fight with almost none. You just have to get indoor peace control, which is cones and walls, baby. The added benefit of fighting inside is for a third party, it's a little harder to pinpoint exactly where you are. They'll obviously hear shooting and audio cues are pretty easy to track, but it's still a hell of a lot harder than looking into the sky and seeing a massive build fight. Like, I wonder where they are. But that brings me to fighting style number two, which is cranking up in these big build fights. Even if it is more obvious to third parties, you'll still have the absolute advantage of high ground. They might push you, but they're pushing from the disadvantage. If you build high, you can also see this exact third party's location that's trying to push you and when they are. You have a bird's eye view on the whole POI and surrounding area, so keep an eye out. If they decide to engage you, then you have the choice of either shooting at them or water falling down and maybe disengaging. This fighting style is obviously more aggressive and you'll find yourself in more build fights, but I still like this one a lot because at least you're never getting surprised. Like the second you see someone, you're cranking the height. Tip five to stop dying off spawn is do anything to take the RNG out of your landing. RNG of course stands for random number generator, so just take the randomness out. There are dozens of locations across the map that have some sort of guaranteed or likely spawn. And depending on when you're watching this, that could have changed, but in Chapter 5 Season 2, there are a lot of places. For example, Olympus and the Underworld sections have almost guaranteed, if not 100% spawn rate, god chests. There are also a lot of places with key cards and mini vaults with guaranteed good loot and high spawn rate epic chests. Fencing Fields has a shield truck for 100 shield every time, and guaranteed rotation with these flowberry spawns. The underworld also has free rotation by just going in the water. So use these things and try to take the RNG out of your games. Maybe change your landing spot or add somewhere to your path of rotation. Lastly, tip six changed my game around. Drop a like if you found these tips helpful and invest in the channel. I'm still a relatively small YouTuber making zero bags. So please use code read the ninja in the item shop if you're eyeing something down. Or if you're looking at getting this upcoming avatar mid-season battle pass, please help me out or just another small creator to try and get our funny up. But tip six and the thing that changed my game around is controlling the fight. And specifically be the first one to get damage in on another player. I find myself often too scared to shoot someone if I'm not ready to engage in a fight. I do this because what if one breaks out? Am I screwed? But I actually started realizing even if I'm not ready, that's the best time to shoot at people. This is early game and most of your enemies will either be weak or they won't have any extra heals. That way, if you get damage in on them early, they're likely to not engage. And this is how you control the situation. They'll probably back off and now it's your decision to push them or disengage because you didn't want to fight in the first place. The essence of starting a fight can usually stop yourself from actually getting into one. If you get damaged first, then they are pushing you and you don't have a choice anymore, they're gonna do it. But if you get the tide in your favor first by damaging them, then you have the power to decide. And lastly, tip number seven is come say what's up. By the time you're seeing this video, I might be streaming. I'm uploading this roughly two hours before I go live. So if you have any burning questions you need answered about your gameplay, join the YouTube live at 12 PST. I stream Saturdays at noon, so come by. I do have an Instagram, it is linked down below. So if you want updates about the channel, when I'm live streaming, when I'm helping people out in Fortnite coaching, go follow on Instagram and I'll be posting that there, as well as probably a lot of memes. And tournaments just got harder for everyone this season, so I get why you're dying early. But even though they got harder for most, some people actually got easier if you know a certain trick about rotates. This video I made right here talks about that method you need to know if you want to take competitive seriously this season. Drop a like if you've enjoyed and invest into the channel. Use code READTHENINJA and on that note, I am signing off.